So you guys have heard from me so many times. Oh, I want to read this back, but I can't fit it into a vlog. <laughs> so I've decided to make that into a vlog. <laughs> you guys have told me to do this so many times before and it's time. So we're going to be reading the books that I've always said I can't fit into vlogs. And I asked you guys on Instagram, which books do I say this with the most? Because I think I kind of have, have like horse blinders on. Like, I'm like, I never say that. That definitely doesn't happen to me. So I asked you guys on Instagram, what books do I say this the most for? And we're going to be reading them. The first book, almost everyone said, and I'm going to be honest, before I asked you, I wasn't going to put this in this video because I was in denial. <laughs> denial is a river in Egypt. Your husband <laughs> is gay. But you all said it. And it is Unwell Women by Eleanor Cleghorn. I'm very excited to read this. So this is nonfiction about women and the way that women have been mistreated in medicine and how medicine and our perception of illness and sickness and different health issues have been built around men throughout the years. And I have been so excited to read this for so, so long. I think I've made so many of you read it. <laughs> and I'm just very interested to see it for myself. So I'm super excited about this. I also, you know, used to read a lot of nonfiction, a lot of feminist nonfiction. And so I'm excited to dive back into that a little bit. So that's our first book. Second book, quite a few of you said, you said, anything in the tea dragon series so we're gonna be ah! we're gonna be reading we're gonna be reading the tea dragon festival by kate o'neill guys we're gonna be finally doing it so this is the second in the tea dragon festival graphic novels uh we're following these little tea dragons who brew tea and i think this one is a prequel to the first book and i've been trying to save these oh look we kind of match yeah. It's very chic. So chic. Really very chic. I've been saving this for the perfect day and now we just we just have to read it. So I'm very excited. It's time to stop saving it and read it. Because guess what? I could read this once a month if I wanted to. And I get I bet you it would still be perfect and incredible and have all its magic. So I'm so excited. I'm gonna love it. I, this is like a five-star prediction, guys. I mean lots of but all these books are pretty much five-star predictions. They're all books that I've really wanted to read for a really long time, but always say, oh I just can't fit it into a vlog. <laughs> <laughs> and then the final book, I don't think any of you said when I asked you, but for me, this is the epitome of I want to read this book, but I can't fit it into a vlog because I think I've owned this book now for like three years and it's been always one of the books I've wanted to read the most. I just don't think I've mentioned it a lot in the past year or so because I'm kind of like embarrassed that it's taken me this long to read it. But I used to say this so much about this book. I remember back when I was in Leeds, I vividly remember saying this so much. And the book is I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. So this is true crime about the Golden State Killer and it's basically Michelle McNamara's like unflagging pursuit it says on the back um, to find out who the Golden State Killer was and to bring him to justice. I have just heard so many good things about this book once again and you know true crime I watch a lot of true crime like documentaries on Netflix and stuff but I think it's always important to think about like the ethics of true crime. There's so many discussions around true crime, like the perception of women as victims and like obsession with killers and stuff. But I think this one is coming from a place of like justice and bringing justice to victims. And so I'm really excited to read it. It was the winner for best non-fiction on Goodreads Choice Awards 2018. So there we go, really excited. I'm hoping that I'm gonna find this just super enthralling and interesting. I've heard such wonderful things. So yeah, that's the three books we're gonna be reading in this vlog. I don't know what we're gonna start with, but shall we just begin? Let's get into it. Hello. Let's begin the reading portion of this vlog, shall we? If my hair looks a bit crazy, it's still wet. I'm trying to let my hair, now that I've, I've in the summer, I tend to switch to washing my hair in the morning so I can let it dry naturally throughout the day. Something about what we've just said has made my face go really red. I got embarrassed about my the way my hair is looking apparently. <laughs> How are we doing? I've just been sitting here watching Gabby. Hey Gabby, say hello. <laughs> and I am 100 pages into Unwell Women. And I thought I would check in with you. I kind of feel like I've only just gotten to grips with this book. Okay, this is like a five star prediction. I've been a bit rattled, right? Cause I started it off, I've listened, I'm listening to the audiobook and reading along. And I'm reading it slowly, guys. I'm reading it slowly when I'm not Reading physically, I'm listening at 1.5. When I'm reading physically, I'm listening at like 2.1. That's so slow for me. <laughs> wow. Crazy. You're crazy, girl. So yeah, I started it and there was just something about the writing style. I was struggling to process and I'm still feeling a little bit like this, but I feel like I'm getting better with it where like a sentence will happen and I'll have to like 
process what that sentence just said rather than processing it real time. Does that make sense? The whole sentence will happen and I'll have to like, okay, what do those words mean? And put them together. It's not easily, perhaps as easily digestible as I would like. So far, we've been in the first section learning about the way that kind of women's illness and women's bodies have been, is pathologized the right word? Have been thought of and like uh, described in medicine and in culture throughout history. Something that's interesting about this book is that it's got, I think, three parts? Yeah, it's got three parts. Part one is ancient Greece to the 19th century. Part two is the late 19th century to the 1940s. And part three is 1945 to the present. And what's interesting is that it is therefore kind of telling us the story of like women's health uh, chronologically. If you don't know, this book is a journey through medicine and myth in a man-made world. So it's about the ways in which women have been, yeah, thought of and the way that women's illness has been thought of and perhaps ignored throughout history. And women's health issues have been thought of incorrectly or ignored uh, throughout history. So yeah, it is kind of telling it historically, but it does like jump around within those parts. Does that make, so one minute we'll be talking about ancient Greece, next minute we'll be talking about medieval, next minute we'll be talking about something that happened in 1800, 1820, you know? It does jump around. So although it is like, it has sectioned those off and that we're kind of going through history, learning about women's health, it does within those parts jump around. It kind of tackles an issue or an area. So I think we, we've just had like one on childbirth or whatever. It tackles an issue or an area and goes throughout those uh, time periods, throughout that section, it jumps around within it, which I think is an interesting way to tell the story. This first section is a really wide, like ancient Greece to the 19th century is a really wide time period. And sometimes I'm struggling if I miss like the year or the century in which she says something's happening. I'm struggling to like situate where I am if I'm listening to the audiobook, even though I'm listening to it slowly. <laughs> So I feel like that is, I'm like, where, where the fucking history are we? We could be anywhere if I just miss that one thing or like, you know, listen to it, but don't quite take in as much as I should. Um, so I think the second two sections are going to be easier for me to follow, but I am enjoying it. And I mean, it's already deeply, deeply angering. I, I think if you're interested at all in women's health issues, and this book does a really good job of like acknowledging gender and like how sex and gender aren't the same thing. And, you know, the ways in which medicine and the way that, I'm saying women's health issues is because medicine has only ever viewed health in man-women binaries, you know? So I would say this book is inclusive in what it recognises and it, how it recognises that like how intersex people haven't been recognised properly throughout history and etc. So we've already touched on stuff like that. So I think it's doing a good job of being inclusive whilst also recognising that like women's health issues, I'm just using, you know, the general term, have been treated very differently to what's viewed as men health issues or normal, like, general health issues. Because men health issues are general health issues. Women's health issues are viewed as women's health issues. Does that make sense? I'm enjoying it. Perhaps not as much as I thought, but I'm just going to read this whole thing today. I've got no plans now. I did some work this morning, wash my hair, whatever. But now I have no plans. So I'm just going to read this book. I'm going to go out and get lunch, guys. I'm so excited. My favourite... Oh, I've just really been craving it. My local fish and chip shop does this halloumi salad pitta and I'm obsessed with it and I just feel like I need it. So I'm gonna go out and get lunch. It's so exciting. Guys, I never go out and get lunch. What is this? <laughs> Dear Lord, what a sad little life, Jane. <laughs> so anyways, I'm gonna go out. I'll check in with you when I'm a little bit further through. I am starting to enjoy it more. I'm starting to get into it more than initially I was like, oh shit, we're in deep shit because this is a book I've been so excited to read for so long. And at first I couldn't get into it, but things are looking up. Anyway, let me shut up and let's go get some halloumi. <laughs> I know it doesn't look it, but it is so yummy. <laughs> Halloumi, loads of different, like, like red cabbage in there. Guys, it's so fucking good. I'm so excited. <laughs> Hello, I am on page 245. So I've gotten quite a good chunk through the book because loads of this at the end is references. So the book ends like there. So that's how much I got left. I'm gonna hope to finish it tonight. That's not happening. All right. 
here's the thing. I'm pretty sure this is on my five, was it on my five star predictions this year? I'm not sure. I don't think it's gonna be a five star because there is something about the writing that I am not like 100% jamming with in the way that it's written. It feels like it could have been edited a bit more and could have been a bit shorter and a bit slicker. And I think this is a debut, non-fiction. And so I just feel like it could have been a bit more precise in the way that it was talking about things. Sometimes it's making links between things that I'm not sure is entirely, like the, the connection is entirely, not justified, but it has worked for that connection enough. And I think some stuff could have been cut. I am enjoying it still. There's so much interesting stuff in this that I feel like a lot of it is stuff that I knew vaguely of. I don't feel like I'm learning loads more, but I think it's interesting to hear it in detail. I don't know if you guys know, but hysteria, this was like a term that was basically just used against all women throughout so much of history. <laughs> like she's having hysteria, whatever, she's hysteric. Uh, hysteria comes from the Latin word for uterus. So the, the whole idea of hysteria is feminine. And I don't know, I just think that that's interesting and so much of our history is to do with women being more emotional than men and that's just got me thinking about a lot of things like in myself <laughs> and like I don't know I think I am quite emotional I was having an emotional breakdown last night I just posted about Instagram <laughs> I haven't told you about it. it was about salad well it was about a lot of things but it was about salad and I didn't want that salad but I wanted a different salad and it was just it was the breaking point <laughs> And I'm basically, this is like TMI, but like I'm basically on the break from my pill and I've been running my pill on for longer because of issues I was having with my period. So a gynecologist I went to see told me to like, I take my pill for like nine weeks now rather than three before I have a break. And it's been fixing all those other issues. I was having issues with fainting basically, which is always fun and being sick and stuff. Um, and it's fixed those, but I have been finding myself more emotional. And I've been on this pill since I was what, like 17? You know, six years of my life. I don't quite know, maybe 18, 17, 18. And I just wonder like, what would I be like off it? You know, some people come off the pill and it's like, oh, it's great. I'm, I'm like, oh, it, I've unlocked this whole new level of emotions that had been suppressing. And some people come off it and they have really negative experience coming off it and have to go back on it. And I just like wonder who am I? I haven't been an adult without being on the pill. And I just wonder who I am <laughs> without being on it. I don't know. And I've been thinking, sometimes I think I tried to suppress my emotions, but I don't think being inherently emotional is a bad thing. I think it's, you know, be feeling emotions for other people is a good thing. So I don't know, it just got me thinking about stuff like that. I would say this book is in, is incredibly US and UK centric. I think the author is from the UK. It's incredibly focused on just UK and US. And that's not inherently a bad thing. I think any nonfiction has to have a focus, right? Like it can't be just like about everything. Some of the faults of this book is I think when it tries to extend into topics that it isn't inherently, like there's a whole chapter on women's suffrage and women's right to vote and like, Although that is connected to women, I don't think it's necessarily, it wasn't quite connecting it to like unwell women, which is the rest of the book is about medicine and women in that, you know? So I don't think it's inherently a bad thing that it's very UK and US centric because that's the perspective that this author can write from. But just if you're wanting a book that isn't, this isn't the book for you is what I would say. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and finish it. It's very interesting but I do think it could have been condensed. I think it sometimes gets a little bit lost in the weeds. So yeah, I'm gonna go cook dinner. I might show it to you, me cooking, but I'm feeling self-conscious because I've got my ugliest clothes on. I'm doing a wash. I don't know if you can hear the tumble dryer. I feel like I'm constantly doing a wash and constantly, I don't have a lot of clothes, guys. I constantly don't have enough clothes, particularly I don't have a lot of summer clothes. I have so many jumpers, but I can't wear any of them. I have like three t-shirts that I like that I <laughs> So I should probably like buy more. I just don't really buy clothes. I don't know. That's like a whole, we don't need to get into that. That's a whole can of worms <laughs> to open. I might film me cooking, but like if you just see my clothes, I got these hideous like shorts with strawberries on that I haven't worn in years because it's that dire. <sighs> Anyways, I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go cook dinner. I may show it to you. If not, I'll probably see you tomorrow morning having hopefully finished this tonight. Ball knew her by her will to make 
get whatever she put her mind to. Late night hours up the hill, serving coffee to strangers, talking about revenue. She kept dreaming of a world big enough for everyone. But she knew it must rain before it grows. She kept dreaming of the day butterflies survive the wheel. Even though she get knocked down and never showed. Right. <laughs> so I finished Unwell Women. I don't have a ton more to say to you because I feel like pretty much the same. I did enjoy, I think this last section perhaps the most. I'm gonna give this a four star. So it's not a five. I'm gonna give it a four star, but my personal enjoyment is perhaps more of a 3.5, 3.75. But the reason I'm giving it a four is because I think this is a really important book that's discussing things that have not been spoken about enough. And that I think a lot of people get something from. There was just something about the rhyme style that like, it wasn't entirely for me. <laughs> Bombastic side eye. Criminal offensive side eye. Something about it, perhaps it's because it's a debut, but it just wasn't the easiest to follow. It wasn't the easiest to engage with. Sometimes I felt like the points that she was making were a bit meandering. I've told you that all already. But that was what held me back in my personal enjoyment of like loving this. For me, it was okay and enjoyment, but what it was discussing was a four star. Perhaps I've heard some people say that there's some inaccuracies in this and I don't know enough about anything to know if there's inaccuracies. So I would just point that out there. But for me, I think this is a book that so many people, especially if you're someone who is, you know, a woman identifies as a woman and is unwell. And it could be in a many different ways that's outlined in this book. I think this could be a really helpful book for you to like see the history of women's health and women's issues and the way that women's health issues have been ignored and uh, mistreated throughout history. Doctors basically weren't interested in anything that was associated with feminine and not with masculine, right? Like, they just weren't interested. And the ways, it's so angering. Like, yeah, when you think of all the different ways that women have been ignored and mistreated with their health throughout history, um, it's anger in G-Sing. So that's where I land on this. I'm giving it a four. For me, it was like 3.5 enjoyment, which is a little bit disappointing, but I did get a lot out of it. And perhaps that is the point of nonfiction, you know? Okay, I don't know which I'm gonna start next of the Tea Dragon Festival and I'll Be Gone in the Dark. I'm leaning towards maybe just reading the Tea Dragon Festival, but it depends whether I have time tonight. Whereas I might, cause I want this to be like, I sit down, I get all cozy, like it's the perfect reading experience, you know? So I don't know if I'll have time for that today. So I might start this and then read this and then finish this. I don't know. You'll see next, whatever I'm doing. <laughs> Something about you isn't right I swear you can make me lose my mind Lying here awake at night If this is love then I don't want it Why you gotta be so complicated I'm sick and tired of contemplating I don't want to be here waiting If this is love, then I don't want it I can't be the one You keep running to Whenever you feel down I can't be that someone Who'll always be there when something's wrong I can't rely on you depend on you now I can't rely on you guys I shouldn't even actually need to say anything five stars <laughs> <laughs> yes! 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 Yes!
If you've been watching all my videos, you know, we've been in Struggle City. I haven't had a proper five star since like mid-April, but we're back, baby. We're back. These are never gonna be anything less than five stars. Like they're always gonna be five stars. The third one is gonna be five star. I don't I could rate it now and not read it for a year and it would be five stars. This book Oh, it's so beautiful. I mean, just look at it. I don't want to like, I didn't want to show you too many of the pages because I don't want to spoil the whole thing for you. But this is like a prequel to the first Tea Dragon Society book. So we've got little tea dragons in this, but this is more about an actual dragon, a big dragon that our main character finds and stumbles upon. That's them there and like their friendship. And Oh, it's just so beautiful, guys. <laughs> in terms of the representation in this, the dragon character is non-binary slash gender fluid. I'm not sure what they would be like technically classed as, but there's this section where they describe to Rin, our main character, how dragons can switch between genders and like how they switch between genders. And I thought that was just such a poignant and beautiful moment. And we've got two characters in the male-male relationship who are in the first book who appear in this. And there's also a character in the village who uses sign language to speak, who is deaf. And the whole village has learned sign language for this character. And just like, isn't that so beautiful? It's just, by the way, I read this last night. I was feeling really down. I've been having a really, really rough mental health week guys like it's been rough but I read this last night I didn't want to film anything I just wanted to like sit down and read this and it was incredible and then I just read it again <laughs> I just read it for a second time because it's just so beautiful you know I know these aren't technically kids books but I whenever I read these I just get so excited to read these to my future child one day because the way that these view the world is the way that I would hope I would raise a child to view the world. Does that make sense? I'm already like when I'm reading it I'm like what age could I like could they fully start to take this in? It's the same I'm having this discussion. <laughs> I think about this stuff a lot. I was having this discussion with my patrons when we had a High School Musical movie night. Very different tone, but <laughs> we were having a High School Musical movie night the other night. And um, I was like, what age would be best to introduce High School Musical to my kids to make them obsessed? To like fully, you know, make them love it. <laughs> Very disturbing. Go see a counselor. Ugh. But yeah, if you're looking for a cute, heartwarming, inclusive, joyful, gorgeous graphic novel, this would be the one for you. Obviously, read, well, you could read this one first, technically, because it is a prequel, but I would recommend The Tea Dragon Society first. But yeah, I, I'm i almost tempted to just like read these all the time. Like just every couple of months, just like read the books again. I need to read number three soon because they are just perfection. What it teaches you about friendship, about found family, about community, right? I think the community is such a special thing and the community of the village in this is so special. And what it's saying about caring for others and being there for others and our duty as a community to care for others, I just think is the most gorgeous thing on this earth. Like this is perfection to me. It was five stars. I adored it. I loved it. I don't know what else is there to say to you. It's so gentle, cozy, gorgeous. It's perfect. It's perfect guys. If you haven't started this graphic novel series yet, I don't even know what to tell you. Like you have to because it is just perfect. I loved it and I cannot wait to read number three. And then I think I'm just gonna read all of K. O'Neill's past stuff. Like I'm gonna have to get all of K. O'Neill's graphic novels because they've published a lot. And so I need to go back through the archives and just read them all. Okay, so it's time to get into our final book. I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. You guys know, I told you this about, it's the one woman's obsessive search for the Golden State Killer. I'm excited to get into it. There probably won't be a lot of B-roll in the rest of this vlog, just cause I am feeling a bit like sensitive, <laughs> a little bit emotional. So I kind of just want to be, you know, I'm, I, I'll am check in with you when I have thoughts, but I probably won't film much B-roll. But yeah, I'm going to try and get through a good chunk of this today. It's only about 25 past two. I need to probably just edit what I've just filmed of this into this vlog because this is Friday and it's hopefully going up on Sunday and I'm out Sunday. So I have to get this all done by tomorrow. And then I will just be reading this for the rest of the afternoon. So hopefully I will make a good chunk and maybe I'll check in with you when I'm about halfway through. Okie dokie, good morning, good morning. It's time to do my skincare and I'm halfway through I'll Be Gone in the Dark. So I thought I would chat to you. Whilst I do both, two birds, one stone. <laughs> yeah, so this is Michelle McNamara's story of kind of her hunt for the Golden State Killer and trying to figure out uh, who it was. Now, I don't think she manages to solve it um, before she passes away. There's elements of this book that are like pieced together from articles that she wrote 
or like piece together from her notes where she hadn't written that chapter yet. So yeah, there is that element to it, but it's basically her taking you through. It's got a very interesting timeline. We're jumping around in time. So sometimes like she'll talk us through one of the murders that happened and then she'll go to something that happened with the police in the 90s that led them to discover something new about the case because a lot of this was happening like in the 70s and 80s and then we'll go back to like the 70s where he before he was murdering people he was like a serial rapist um and she'll talk us through like that element so it's jumping around in time a lot i am enjoying it i here's the thing on the back all of the like <laughs> all of the uh, endorsements what's the word for this like blurbs all of the blurbs are like Stephen King propulsive can't stop reading this is a one sit down read this is how riveting this is I tore through it in two days like I if I didn't have to read this like within the next like three days I probably wouldn't be reading I'm finding it quite a slow read I've just caved and got on the audiobook which I've been trying not to do and I know that's kind of ridiculous to do when you're halfway through a book good guy get a grip girl <laughs> but I've been kind of like trying to resist because I feel like a lot of the books that I've read recently, I've had the audiobook. <laughs> so I was trying to like tone down on it a bit. But the way that this is written is like you're sitting across from her and this person who has put so much research into this and like knows this inside out. But you're like, you're just having a conversation with her. I don't know how to explain it. Like it's still written with so much research and like dates and whatever, but you feel like she is with you. Like her presence in this book, I feel like is very strong as the author. Um, and you feel like you're just sitting across from her and she's talking you through the case and like what she knows and she's so excited to like share this with you and so I just thought that the audiobook might bring that to life for me a bit more because I was feeling a little bit detached from it and a little bit like just not loving it perhaps as much as I was expecting but um I think it's so well researched so well done and she's really like telling the complexities and she's got so much information about the case that I just can't imagine how long it would have taken to like research this so yeah I'm enjoying it I won't I am not I'd say at the moment it's like a strong four star do you know what I mean like it's not I'm not not enjoying it but so many people I know have given this a five star and for some reason it just wasn't quite clicking but maybe the audiobook will help me do that so yeah I'm just gonna go ahead and finish it today and I will chat with you I guess a little bit later today on my thoughts because I don't think it will take me long to get through it now that I've got the audiobook it'll probably speed up my reading a little bit okay it's much later <laughs> the same day but I just finished I'll be gone in the dark by Michelle McNamara McNamara I said her name weird by Michelle McNamara <laughs> And I'm gonna give this four stars. This is a solid four star for me. You know, this is a kind of true crime topic. I've never really heard anything about this guy and what he did. And he was so prolific in the terrible things he did and how they escalated. And I think it's just crazy that until her, he'd never really been given much media attention or the public had never been like, held attention to this guy in the way that they had with other serial killers. Yeah, I thought this was really fascinating. I thought it was really interesting. There was just something about it that wasn't a five star for me, but you know, nonfiction, I always feel is a little bit difficult to rate. Like what is a five star nonfiction? I mean, I have some, so like I know they exist, but um, I find it a bit more difficult to quantify, especially now that because I don't read as much non-fiction as I used to but this video has made me really excited to read more I just think this is if you're interested in true crime this is perhaps one of the best investigative works I've seen of really having a genuine personal desire to see the person brought to justice and putting the victims at the center of your story without also like taking advantage of them or like dramatizing their stories or whatever like the victims are there they're ever present but it's not the focus isn't always on them in a way that sometimes i think it can feel exploitative so i just thought her balance of the way that she wrote this and the way she approached the case was wonderful there was just something about it that wasn't like it didn't jump out at me i wasn't obsessed you know but i enjoyed the reading experience. I don't think there's a lot more to say. I think if this is something that vaguely interests you, I would recommend picking it up. Something that you should be aware of that I think I kind of missed sold at the start is that she doesn't solve it. Like this, she passes away before she finishes the book and in her lifetime, she didn't solve the case, you know? So of course now we know who he was, but this book isn't necessarily like solving it or playing an important role 
according to some of the detectives, of that being solved. It's more giving us an insight into the type of person he was and what influenced him and all the different factors at play and different, the ways his personality shifted and the ways what he was doing shifted. And I thought that was really, really interesting. So yeah, I really enjoyed this. And listen, I am so glad guys, I have finally <laughs> read these three books that I always said I couldn't fit into vlogs and I had to do a whole vlog about the books I couldn't fit in a vlog to fit this into a vlog. <laughs> the standout for me is the Tea Dragon Festival, but I mean this series, I already know the third one's gonna be a five star. Like I don't even need to read it, I could rate it today. This graphic novel series I think is one of the best cozy, gentle fantasy out there with a lovely heart at its core and I couldn't recommend it enough. These two are both non-fictions that I enjoyed and I'm hopefully, I'm gonna start reading more non-fiction guys. Oh <laughs> okay. These are both ones I enjoyed and I think a lot of people could get a lot of from both of them but neither of them were a five star for me. I preferred this one I would say to this. On the whole a pretty successful vlog so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've got some really exciting vlogs coming in the next couple weeks that I think you guys are gonna enjoy. So I love you and I hope you have a good rest of your day and I will see you soon. Bye! <laughs>